Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to speak here. Uh, and I'm delighted that STCS has started this Vigyan Vidushi program. I'm particularly delighted to meet a group of students I, as a biologist, would normally not ever perhaps see uh, because our subjects are all in silos and people you know, have to be encouraged to talk across subjects. Um, I look forward, I look forward to a time where nobody has to particularly you know, single out women who happen to have achieved some success or some award or something. I look forward to a time when there are just so many women and men awardees that nobody thinks it's remarkable that a woman scientist got one, no? I mean, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of sad to, to be one of the very few women who have um, uh, has progressed in their career and, you know, perhaps, um, you know, developed some of uh, uh, the potential that is within all of us. So let's, let's talk about you. This is really about you. All of you are here because you deserve it. All of you are here because you are amongst the exceptional students of your generation. Uh, and all of you are here because you have, I expect, um, overcome very individual barriers that might have uh, prevented you from becoming an uh, 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 undergrad or a, a postgraduate student in your discipline. I imagine most of you are studying computer science or related fields. So congratulations to all of you. Um, what I'd like to talk about today, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give a few examples of why it is, I think, that we women um, limit our own potential, limit ourselves. We are very skilled at giving ourselves a rejection slip before we even you know, aspire for something. Um, there's nothing wrong with us. I think we've been programmed like this. And all of us struggle with this um, throughout our careers. You folks are at the beginning. So I have a few examples uh, I'm going to talk about. Um, Umang has kindly allowed me to speak for uh, 10 to 12 minutes because I want to, I want to perhaps plant the idea that you could question your own, uh, uh, your own um, sort of acceptance of uh, you know, giving up freedoms that in some sense are, are everybody's right. So what freedoms am I talking about? Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give a very um, almost strange and funny example. Think back, um, you've just left your college, you're walking on the street in your town or city. And what do you see on the street? Groups of guys of different, you know, shopkeepers, students, people hanging around, hanging around, sitting on stone platforms. In Mumbai, they'll be sitting by the Marine Drive like this, just hanging around and looking. Look, Vela. I'm saying that the freedom to be utterly just, you know, purposeless and sit around and just look and think and do whatever, it's, it's a freedom that I don't see young girls exercise. Can you, have you, have you ever seen girls clustered around or sitting around singly, just kind of doing nothing? We're the ones that kind of get looked at and commented upon or catcalled upon. But imagine we've gone through life walking from point A to point B in a purposeful manner because we don't have the freedom to just hang out and sit and think or not think, okay? It's a freedom we have just never had. I don't want to say given up because everybody tells us what to do and where to do it. If you've ever traveled alone by train, a single woman traveling by train, I don't need to, I mean, we've all had the experience, is the subject of inordinate amounts of attention because everybody feels the need to know where you're from, where you're going, and you know, nobody's there with you as if you aren't capable of taking care of yourself. These very questions impose upon our freedom. We don't have the right to just be privately traveling by train. Now, how does this speak to, you know, success in, in, in science and mathematics or computer science. I'm going to get to that. Here's another example. This example perhaps pushes the envelope a little bit more, but uh, in the privacy of your rooms with your videos off, I want you to do this exercise. I want you to imagine you're in a garden and you know, there's lovely nature around and you're just sitting and enjoying life, okay? that. I'd like for all of you to sit like that. 
just imagine the sky and the birds and the flowers and everything. And then somebody walks by your bench. And what do you do? That. Okay. When I was in Chicago, I was a postdoc in Chicago. I went camping with some friends and we hiked on a trail and we sat by a lake and I reached there first and I found a bench and I decided to just do that. And a friend came by and said, wow, you look so relaxed. I've never seen a girl sit like this. You know, it just came, <laughs> I've never seen a girl sit like this. And I began thinking, that's true. This is a very male pose, you know, like this, legs stretched out, arms stretched out. We are told all our lives how to sit. Okay, we sit with our knees together. And I won't unpack that here, but think of the layered meanings of what it means for a society to instruct it girl, its girls that we must sit with our knees together. And now, how does this connect to science and maths and computer science? After all, you folks have all studied at very, to very high levels in your chosen fields, uh, which means that you, know, you didn't face the barriers that many, many girl students face right from school about not doing math and not doing science and so on, and it's not for you and so on. But think, if our physical actions have been limited in these ways that perhaps many of us never even thought about, think of how our intellectual freedoms might also have been limited and we never knew. I mean, you know, you may say, well, I don't, I don't really have the time to look around on streets and, you know, gaze at things. And I like how I'm sitting, thank you very much. And that's your privilege. But you know, a bird flapping about in a very roomy, very airy cage may never know that it is in one. And yet you have to wonder if the bars were not there, what flight path might that bird take? And might its wings not become stronger? So that's the metaphor, okay? The, the physical freedoms we have just, you know, um, had taken away from us and that we never claimed back uh, are a metaphor for other freedoms that we don't know we're compromising. And here I'll come to my third example, which isn't a metaphor, but in fact, it is sort of directly the elephant in the room almost in a woman, women in science discussion. And possibly I may be the only one in the audience uh, directly qualified to talk about it the whole deal with marriage and children. It's only for women professionals that these things are even things that impinge upon every discussion anybody has with us. Nobody ever cares if a guy gets married or not. You know, they may, they may not, it's their business, but it is not so for women. And it's not just our parents, it's our, you know, auntie next door and the, you know, a neighbor's three houses down and anybody you might meet at festivals we'll all be extremely interested in this very private personal business of whether you decide to get married. And God help us if we decide that we don't wish to be married and that we don't wish to have children. We're fine this way, thank you very much. This is something that men can do very easily. But if you're one of the women who decides that this is you know, how you want to live your life, all power and strength to you because you're gonna be fighting battles with every busybody in existence, impinging upon your freedom to make a very personal decision. And then if you're a woman who, you know, at some point decides, all right, I'll find a partner uh, and so on. Every busybody in the world that you meet is going to tell you something as if you've forgotten. It's as if the world doesn't, it's as if the world thinks that we don't know we have biological clocks. <laughs> because people will remind you or remind your parents or remind your well-wishers every passing moment that, you know, isn't it time for you to have babies? I mean, dear God, here you're a professional woman, uh, you know, I was doing my PhD, uh, I went to Caltech, I met my partner there, married, and yet when I'd come home, people wouldn't talk, ask me, you know, hey, so what's it like? Hey, congrats, you got a PhD. Now when are you gonna have babies? I mean, whose business is it for God's sake, right? As if we're not intensely aware of our, our own plans and what we need to do in life. Um, for the record, uh, uh, my, um, Husband and I, um, we spent, I spent 11 years in the US and he's 16. We did the combined job search. Uh, we returned to India. Both of us are faculty at TIFR. I started my faculty position at the age of 31. Uh, I have two children whom I had at the age of 35 and 38. 
they are now 15 and 19 years old. And this is just my story. Okay, there is no one size fits all in this. If, you know, there are fantastically successful women who had kids early or who didn't have kids or whatever. The point is the whole world opines on these decisions. And now tell me, these continuous erosions on our freedoms, do you not think they might affect our, uh, how, how, far we work, how far we aim to achieve our potential? Do you not think that they might make us um, insidiously compromise our own ambitions because everybody around us is telling us what to do and telling us what we can't do. So, so I'd, I'd like to close saying that in Vigyan Vidushi, you're going to get outstanding, outstanding lectures uh, in your fields of interest in computer science and machine learning, some of the fantastic to uh, topics I've seen. And of course, that's going to enrich you. But also, but also, do look out for people's stories. Do look out for times in their life when they have claimed the freedoms that they needed to achieve what they wanted or to at least try. Do look out for the paths various people have taken. Uh, you will have mentors, you will have special lectures somewhere, and you will have your peers. Okay, so amongst Amongst the stories that you all exchange, you will be a networked group of people. Some of you have had shared experiences, some of you opposite experiences, some of you did opposite things in response to the same constraint. In sharing these stories, that is in some sense one of the richest uh, take homes from a Vigyan Vidushi program, that in all of these stories, you will find examples and ideas and you will be able to map your own path through all of the hurdles you're going to face in life, through all of the you know, constraints society might try and place on you, you will discover how to slowly collect these little, little badges of freedom that you didn't know you had given up. And it is these little badges of freedom that you collect along the way that will help you go farther than you had ever allowed yourself to. Thank you very much. I look forward to much success from all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much.